Hello and welcome to DV Test Podcast number nine. Um, I am here with the well, most of the admins of the SENC, the Southeastern Nerf Club, and uh, I will let them introduce themselves uh, as I usually do with these podcasts in alphabetical order by how Discord sorts you. Let's go with uh, the one and only Nerf Vampire himself. Alrighty, so my name is Drag Talitha, and uh, I sort of founded the SCNC, so I am here to talk about the SCNC. I've been in a podcast before where I did a full intro, but I also run a very small YouTube channel pertaining to the hobby and host a number of other events in that regard. But uh, the SCNC is definitely my favorite Nerf organization and kind of like my baby, but it's all grown up now. And the Flying Chicken. My name is Flying Chicken. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Cool. My name is Flying Chicken. I've been in the community for nine years, and as of now, I'm a fixture in the Nerf Internet community and also a head, head admin of the SCNC. And we have Austin, who I don't know if you have a like internet name you'd rather me go by, but you are Austin to me. Yes, I can definitely stay as Austin. That's how pretty much everybody knows me as. I don't really have a nickname. Maybe I've been around long enough. We'll find out. But oh no, you're getting one. We just haven't decided yet. That's fair enough. Um, so I joined the SCNC back in. I joined the Facebook page. I believe it was March of 2015, and I went to my first war in April. So I've just been hanging around ever since. For some reason, these people kind of like me, so they decided to make me an admin. I am the baby admin and the youngest one the on the admin team. So I'm pretty much the most inexperienced, but I'm learning a lot, and uh, you know, I have a great time doing it. And last but not least, TK1138. Uh, my name's Steven. I go by TK1138 on YouTube. Did some videos of End War and stuff with Drac, and I'm the newest admin of the SCNC, having been made an admin after End War. But I ran my college HVZ for four years, so that's kind of where I cut my teeth on with Nerf. Awesome. Uh, so you introduced yourselves. Do you guys want to talk a little bit, uh, briefly give an overview of how you got into Nerf and how you uh, eventually, like, finding Nerf eventually led you to finding the SENC, or unless the story is slightly different. Um, but I know, uh, Drac, you helped found the SENC. But uh, I think you maybe talked about this a little bit in the Endor one. So I don't know if you want to give like a quick yeah. version of this, but feel free to talk about how you got into the hobby. I, I guess that's fine. Um, so again, like there's a full dissertation on my intro to Nerf in the Endor vlog. But to keep it very short and sweet, old school like HVZ player who has a real passion for NIC. And I've been doing this for almost as long as Chicken. So I'm like definitely not Gen Zero, but Gen One nerf. And it kind of all stems from there. But that allowed me to put my finger in a lot of different pies over the years. And what about you, Flying Chicken? I know you've been here for a long time. How did you find the nerf hobby? Well, as a younger person, I originally had the pair of red and blue dark tag blasters, you know, the 10 shot turret ones. And uh, as most of the people in the hobby in this hobby are, I'm uh, mechanically inclined and have a curiosity for engineering. So I decided to take the red one apart because I like the blue one better. And springs flew everywhere. And then I looked up online how to put it back together. That led me to a channel called UN13, which led me to Nerf Haven. I made an account there in November 2008. Well, that's when I got approved. And I've been in the community ever since. And very, I've been active in the community for nine years. So I want to put that out there. And what about you, Austin? How did you get into this hobby? I mean, I grew up with Nerf with my cousins and stuff, shooting each other in the face with the Titan because it was fun. But um, really getting into the actual modding community, it was uh, Christmas of 2014. I got a sledge for I'm like, man, this thing sucks. And I kind of knew in the back of my head, you know, people painted Nerf guns and stuff. So I was like, all right, well, I'll look it up. And I end up finding a couple of channels, one of which was Drax, and after watching a few videos, I'm like, wow, this guy lives in Georgia, that's pretty neat. And then I saw the SCNC page, him talk about it, and so I joined the SCNC page, and um, that's really how I got into all this. I still don't 
I'm not as much into the modding as much as uh, other people are. I'm okay with just playing as, with stock stuff, but I like to try and dabble every now and then. But um, yeah, it's I, I just just ended up finding his channel through getting a blaster. I was really disappointed with in its stock form. And what about you, TK? So uh, I'm an army brat. I grew up playing with wooden and plastic guns, making machine gun noises at one another and growing up thinking, wow, this would be really cool if I didn't have to just keep going, no, I got you, no, you didn't. And uh, so yeah, 2007, started college, just when the End Strike series came out and I fell in love with the Vulcan, which was what I'd always wanted as a kid. And that kind of developed into us having dorm nerf fights, which generated into HVZ, and I did that all through college. After college, when I graduated, I had a kid. Uh, his, I was actually not going to say this, but my wife encouraged me to. My ex-wife bailed on us, and one of my things I would do to help get my newborn baby that I was raising by myself to sleep was I would watch Drax Nerf videos and talk about it out loud to get the baby to go to sleep. So that got me into modifying Nerf guns, and then I finally showed up to an SCNC and have kind of been in love with the club, the players, and the hobby ever since. That's awesome. Um, so now let's talk a little bit about the history of the SCNC. Uh, so I think Drac and Chicken are probably the best qualified here to talk about this as they started it together from what I know. Uh, so if you guys want to take us through how this came to be. Okay, so uh, Chicken, how long... Has the SCNC been around at this point? Three you, uh, years or something? You, you started in August 2014. Okay, so three years and change. Um, so I'll kind of do a lead-in, and then Chicken can kind of walk you through some of the more fun stuff. But uh, like three years and change ago, um, the Southeast had a really strong NIC scene, and really across the country... A lot of Nerf clubs were sort of like really slowing down. Uh, they were still focused on NIC, and it seemed like NIC attendance was dying. And when I say that our NIC scene was strong, I mean that we hosted pretty large NIC wars, but they didn't happen very often. They happened like three or four times a year, and we'd see the same people every time. And one thing that I noticed was that pretty much nobody but me cared about any of the new Nerf blasters coming out. But they were, like, getting really good, I guess. Like, the Elite line had really taken off and found its footing. Like, I would get excited about the new stock blasters because I would make videos about them and I would consult for the companies that made them. And so, like, I was really entrenched in it. So I'd come to NIC Wars and I'd be like, ah, oh, guys, like, and I mean, like, little things. But I'd be like, the Rampage is pretty good now. And nobody really cared because played... HVZ sometimes, or not at all, more likely. And I see wars where they weren't good enough for that, and they still aren't unless heavily modified. So I, and again, like I hesitate to say I, but like I founded the SCNC mostly because I wanted to spend a lot more time with my friends. And I was like, we need to have a monthly war. But monthly NIC wars would be actually exhausting. And so almost as like a gear down, I was like, we should do super stock. Or at the time it was called Sambo, stock ammo modified blasters only. <laughs> it was like me just being like, guys, I swear the blasters are really like, they're okay now. They are just okay. And it'll be a lot of fun and we'll get together once a month and we'll have a meal and a war. And you don't have to come to all of them, but it'll be fine. And as soon as I kind of put that idea out into the universe, we have what I like to call like our core or the old blood or whatever, which is, of course, like chicken, Nerfomania, EOC, a dude named Mello and Boba Lolo. And by like kind of pushing the idea to them, they were like, yeah, we'll try it. Like, we'll see what happens. And I'll let chicken go from there. TK has a question real quick. He asks, uh, he, he's asking in the chat, why, why Southeast Nerf Club? Because, like, uh, like Jack said earlier, this evolved from the Southeast NIC scene. And back when the NIC was a bigger thing, when, we, when all the activity was on forums and such, we, uh, we took a lot of stock and pride in our, in our regional 
uh, areas. So you had the Northeast, you had the Midwest, you had the West Coast, things like that. And we were the Southeast. Uh, we congregated around and in Georgia, sometimes Florida, sometimes the Carolinas. And so that's why, or from my understanding, that's just why it's called the Southeast Nerf Club, because back then, founded, we were the Southeast. And it worked. I mean, it gave us a really good blanket coverage so that we're not a, uh, I mean, now we've got these like little subsects, I guess. So there is an Alabama Nerf Club and there is a Florida Nerf Club and all this, that, and the other. But uh, our, our strong core is actually like, I'm sure other states would love to disagree, but Atlanta is the major city in the Southeast. And because it's the major city, it's a huge travel hub and it's just really easy and centrally located. So it's allowed us to kind of use what for like chicken and Dennis and Bobo and I was our backyard as this really strong core to travel to. And I think that that's part of why we're so successful when you look at Nerf clubs across not only like globe at large. So anyway, uh, chicken, I don't want to do all the talking. You want to talk about like the first four wars and what possibly made them funny? Yeah, I do. Okay, so like so like you said, this was Jack's baby and he ch and he chose the crib to be in a dirt field somewhere in McDonough, Georgia. And so that was just a place that he found and so for the first four wars or so, we played in a dirt field. There was uh, piles of uh, mulch. And uh, there were, sometimes we had the pleasure of having uh, ATV guests who would love to just ride around and kick up tons and tons of dirt. Why that was we... exciting, though. That built character. Nothing <laughs> really tests your mod like getting a ton of Georgia clay in its working system. There's only like a few pe people active in the SCNC now that remember the dirt field like uh like Jake but that uh that was some trying times but so those were the first few wars and uh it was an interesting time uh some of us were like I was just in my sophomore year in college for example still some people in the club are still developing in sense in the nerf sense the first few wars in a dirt field fun times like like Drax said just a bunch of friends hanging out, a bunch of new friends too. We met some new people and uh, they were probably a bit underwhelmed, but that's okay. And then uh, in December of 2014, I hosted my first uh, Costco. <laughs> Costco. <laughs> Which is uh, old school testicular carnival of horror. Costco. Uh, it's Costco with an H in the end. And it's basically an old school, quote unquote, NIC war because I, there's no hoppers. And that location was in Fayetteville, McCurry Park Disc Golf. And it's a wonderful location. Lots of trees, a pavilion that you can rent out, not anymore. Um, for, about, for most of 2015, that was our location. We moved from the dirt field to Fayetteville. Oh, it beat the dirt field by a long shot. It had, ah, by a long shot, ba -da 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 -da. yeah. Um, no, it had built-in shade and built-in power for people to charge GoPros and not even really like a ton of lipos at the time, but it was, um, and then we, we found since like other locations and whatnot. And like, I just want to touch on it. Uh, chicken mentioned that like the first few SCNC wars might've seemed underwhelming. And I mean, true enough, like we were getting, the first one had like six people show up and then the second one, like. By the time we left the dirt field, we were really only like teens in attendance. And so like compared to the experience that we deliver now with like frequently like up to a hundred people, like it would have been very underwhelming. But at the time it was pretty good. Like it was certainly enough for that dirt field. Is that's kind of how the SCNC started. Like it was born in a dirt field on the side of the highway in McDonough when I was driving by and I just saw it and I stopped my car and I was like having in the back of my mind that's happening here and I literally I got out and I filmed it I filmed it on my phone I might have filmed it on my phone but I filmed a video saying like if you build it was my field of dreams moment like the dirt field literally is my field of dreams I was like I'm gonna build it people will come or they won't I'm okay being out here with a case of Gatorade looking like an idiot. Like, if nobody shows up. But I'm going to try. And it worked.
Do you guys have more you want to say on the origin of the SCNC, or are you guys good on that one? Are you good? Because I don't know what else we have, Dennis. Well, no, I don't know, like, if that was the end of the story, or, like, if you guys want to go through, I don't know, get, uh, move closer to modern SCNC, or, like, go through that progression, uh, talk about how it's grown over time. No, uh, no mountains with stone tablets, just over time. Um, I don't know, I have this theory that's not just for Nerf Wars, but, like, also for life, where if you do good things with good people, you will quickly get more of both. And the SCNC is a perfect example of that. Like, we had such a strong... With that core group that I've referenced already, that, like, we never had to deal with cheating. We never had to deal with, like, people stealing things. Like, we just had a really good... And so when parents would come by and either drop off their kids or more often than not stay and play with their kids, it would it would quickly be like, oh, well, this mom brought her two sons this time, but... Now, all of a sudden, she's bringing a van full of kids from her neighborhood who want to do it. And, like, they don't all come every war, but it's a ton of players just by being good people doing good things. And that's really kind of compounded upon itself exponentially, which is why we are, uh, at least in my experience, as somebody who I think is nerfed in more places with more clubs than anybody else. Like, we are the largest and the I'll, I'll go ahead and say it like we are the largest and the best nerf community in the world like have that but it's all because we've got a lot of good people doing a lot of good things the only thing i have on to add to that is uh the fact that we primarily play in a different location now because of its uh, vicinity north of atlanta that's definitely helped boost our attendance oh yeah it's a really great visibility and it's in a nice park. Uh, so to let Austin and TK jump in a little bit here, um, what have you guys noticed as like growth over the time of the SCNC since you guys have joined? Uh, anything like interesting or stand out to you that um, Go ahead, Austin. that like you've seen the growth of the club? Yeah, I can definitely well, fine because I'm not a waiter. I'm a doer. Um, so I joined in, not last summer, but the summer before that. Wow, has it been that long? Wow. Yeah, I guess it has. Um, and we were averaging, like, it was a 50-person Nerf War. I was so excited. It reminded me of college when we had, like, these 150. But, you know, again, we're college kids who are poor, and Nerf was cheap. So that was one thing. But to have, like, grown adults there, I thought... Man, Drac has a, probably a better story of it than I do. But like my first event, I showed out in like this SWAT loadout, and I'm sitting there going, "I'm either gonna be like fitting in, or I'm gonna look like the most raging douche ever." Um, <laughs> it's a mix of both, actually. But you know, that was about 55, 65 players, and now, like Drac referenced, we're over a hundred during the summer games. You know, we've got like professional-made SCNC flags, and we put them out on the side of the road. Like, it's a legit flag, and I put a flagpole on the road. There's a big highway that runs right by the park. So people just drive by, and they see, like, 100 damn people playing Nerf. And then there's a big flag. It says who we are. And then they just park and say, hey, what's going on? Look at the flag. Get a Nerf gun. Hi, pro. Let's go. We've picked up so many people, so many terrific people, just because they see us doing it. Um, but it's grown so huge we are actually outgrowing our current digs so that's pretty exciting but uh like i said i'm the newest admin and the newest of the four of us to join the scnc so my experience with it really has only been the last two years austin yeah like i said earlier i mean i joined way back in april of 2015 it was like the weekend before my 15th birthday so I hit the wrong so you're trying to talk, buddy. Come on, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> I'll keep trying to talk. Um, but anyways, so I showed up and uh, the, I got there early, if I remember correctly. And Chicken was the only guy there. And Chicken starts introducing himself, I'm like, ah, I know who you are. I've seen you on Drax videos or whatever. And uh, it was actually really nice to meet him. And then you know, other people started showing up, and it was about it was just amazing to me because I think it was about twenty to th maybe thirty people that day. And it was just on this big field, I just remember, you know, back then we had loner blasters, even Drac would haul out, and it was, it was just such a good time, and just, 
watching it grow so much to where we've had like a, like TK said over a hundred players is just insane to me and it all happened at such a rate that I didn't really notice it until uh, probably just before this summer how much it had grown and how kind of overwhelming the war started to become with just so many people but it's still so fun it's still such a good positive community with so many just quality people all over everywhere you look there is another person that you're just like wow what a what a great person i'm glad i can call them my friend i'm glad i get to see them you know once a month and hang out with them it's just it's quite an amazing community just watching it grow has been such a positive thing as well just because like i said it's it's still a small community relative to you know when you think about airsoft and all these other different type of activities like this it's since nerf is so much smaller there's not as much room for people to be crappy people like is that's just the way it works and so it's been positive to you know see so many good people in one space so i actually have a question um relating to that that kind of leads into the next major question is i've been to like hvz games with 100 plus people uh end war had like four plus hundred people but I've never been to a, a Nerf War that had around 100 people or even close to that number. Uh, what What is that sort of organized chaos like? Because in HVZ, it's not that hard to keep track of because all the darts are flying in one direction. But um, how, what's the organized chaos of like a 100-player Nerf War feel like? Well, as an organizer, I can tell you that you have to be very, very prepared. This club... Uh, I can touch on this now. I can touch on it later. And uh, something that we didn't mention when we talked about the beginning of the club is the footwork you have to put into it. Drac uh, single-handedly uh, brought blasters and darts to loan out for a long time. And pavilions and hydration <laughs> and sunscreen. Like, oh my goodness. Organizing a large Nerf war is a ton of work. And... I mean, I'll take a quick second to just, like, thank the three people on this podcast with me. But realistically, like, there's another half dozen people who help in this regard. But again, like, as the club has grown so much and you need so many more of those things, we've just been so incredibly lucky to get, like, a half dozen people in addition to these three made it possible, I guess. Because, and again, like thing and people like to say like oh the SCNC is Drax Nerf Club but it's not it's like the SCNC is realistically a dozen people's Nerf Club and not all of us are admins like we have one guy who literally just cooks for everybody and we call him Master Chef but he is such a precious resource for us that like could not get enough thanks and people who just bring pavilions for shade and attach them all together but like there's a ton of work, and what Chicken's about to say, and I'd rather brag about him than he have to brag about himself, is Chicken brings a loudspeaker so that he can always be heard. Chicken brings frequently a whiteboard where he writes all of the planned round types out and lets people know what is going to be played when, when before lunch, what after lunch, etc., with timestamps so that people can plan their day around it. That is a level of organization that I never really went to. I would just pick the next round. Fancy struck me, but Chicken is a formal educator. And so Chicken is like really good with that level of diligence. And frankly, he's really good at organizing people. So like that's another thing where like, again, it all comes back to like, if you do good things with good people, you will get more of both. And you'll get people who are like really good at making timetables and you'll get people who are really good at bringing materials and sherpaing things and ultimately like organizing a hundred people sounds like a very daunting task until you realize that one of them embraced and like understands your rules and culture and will help you enforce that gently without you having to do it so it sounds really like a lot but it much easier when you have that many good people helping you Sorry for talking over you, Chicken. Jump in there. Can I tack on to the end of what you said real quick, if you don't mind? Uh, just not only is Chicken good at organizing people, he's good at teaching other people how to organize people. Just with, as someone who's hosting an upcoming war and who has attempted to in the past, he was un indescribably helpful with just 
the forms he uses, he shared with me as far as planning rounds and stuff goes, and he gave me pretty much a script and everything I needed to know before I started to host. And just, it's amazing how great he is at that. Aww. Uh, <laughs> well, I was gonna, I was gonna say about uh about how the SCNC has grown very linearly, as in you know we had a few like a dozen people at the start, and we've grown very steadily, which has been very very nice. And as such, uh, for for a time. Uh, I remember when Drax said in his videos, it's not Drax Nerf Club, it's Chicken Nerf Club. And because I, uh, I had a habit, so you started, I don't have an A-type personality, but whenever something was done that, that I thought could be done better, I kind of took over. Like before the SNC started, I had a reputation of taking over wars. Special progression for Drax to uh, relieve some of his duties to me. And as a result, as both the club, as the club grew, I simultaneously went through my education degree, uh, they kind of lined up where I got so much better at planning these wars and logistics wise and uh, planning for attendance and people and, and uh, plans afterwards. And I, and I got pretty good at it. Uh, it got in a. I'm not sure what I was going to say after that. Basically, it's our progression, it's, it's evolved linearly so that in a linear fashion so that we are now capable and prepared for having 100 people wars it has scared us before but the best thing now is that it's not me it's not drac it's us we have we are a team of capable people who as a group can definitely handle that that all of us can handle it individually but we don't have to thankfully yeah there is there is actually no greater relief than the fact that i can now disappear sometimes for a month and i don't have to worry about the scnc at all nor do i have to worry about like oh man i'm gonna be in china this month and scotland the next month and that means the chicken's gonna have to do two back to back because it just more we have such a i don't know is is robust the right word i'm gonna use robust we have such a robust team of people who are so incredibly capable that i can leave for probably as many months as i need to at this point SCNC. The SCNC will be fine because there are a ton of good people there. Something else that doesn't that like makes it less chaotic is like I was talking about earlier. Probably went on for too long about it. It's just the great people we have. Is that we don't really have a problem with cheaters, which is what I know Drac mentioned earlier too. So it's always been on the honor system. Was as far as calling your hits. So we don't need to have a huge admin team to be like constantly watching the game. We don't have, to have moderators and stuff like an HVZ. So that's kind of made life easier as well when it comes to 100 people wars because people see other people using the honor system and it it's pretty effective at least in uh, where the way we use it dennis is there anything you'd like uh me to or us to clarify no i've got some input too when you're done uh no tk feel free to jump in now so i'm kind of i, I my background i'm german so i'm also very uh analytical and very literal at times. So Chicken, Austin, and Drac have touched on this, and this is not a dig, touchy-feely, everyone's great stuff. But truthfully, one of the strongest things about the SCNC is that we have created self-sustaining systems, and we are creating more and more of them, which is allowing the admin team to focus more on big picture stuff and utilizing our best assets, which is our people. We are able to run these wars because of our players and the fact that Drac mentioned every sixth person is a veteran who has a personal investment in the war. We run 100-plus people wars without referees and with competitive game styles. And if at face value that seems utterly ridiculous, you're asking 100 people, at least 30%, 40% of which are strangers, to all follow this one common ideal. Now, sometimes people are like, hey, yeah, that's a great idea, let's do it. And other ones, we have to browbeat into like compliance by not, not forcing them to, not overloading them with rules because we are able to run these wars because we don't have to micromanage, but through a, a combined group mentality of if you follow these rules, you will have more fun. And fun being the biggest contributor to the SCNC because... We've got Drac, we've got Bobo, we've got Nom, we've got Pat, we've got Dark Dragon and FDL and myself and a lot of people that who 
other people in this community consider the tryhards. But then we also have wars like Costco, which Drac touched on what Costco means and some just general silliness. And we're only able to balance that sense of competitiveness as well as silliness and friendly camaraderie because of the players we have and because we invest and trust in our players and not just focus on we are admins, we control everything, you do what we say, we listen to our players, and half the time we let our players as a whole, not as individuals, dictate policy for the club. So every single person who shows up on that field is personally invested in the growth of that club. And because of that one fact right there, we have a, cons a sustainable and continuously improving product, as this is what we spend all month developing is for that one Saturday, every second Saturday of every month, cold rain, sleet, snow, volcanoes, or Trump elections, we are out on that field because of our players. I want to That's point out that I would really enjoy a volcano in there for one of these days. I think that could be interesting, and we would not have to Three. pick up as many darts. That's true. That is very true. Did you guys notice that, uh, what was it? Yamix advertised that their darts were biodegradable. That's a lie. But volcanoes solve all problems. There we go. Hi, Dennis. I think we're good. Next question. All right. So next, uh, let's talk about some of the game types that you guys put on. Uh, I know that, you know, to try and keep things fresh for 100 people, you guys have to run, like, a bunch of different game types. It's not just 315 on repeat as uh, with some other wars. So if you guys want to, like, talk about some of your favorite game types individually, we don't have to obviously go through the rules of every single game type okay, you play. So the but the only yeah. way that like, possibly going to work is if everybody introduces a singular game type that they feel passionate about. Otherwise, we will be here for 20 of minutes. Of course, yeah, that's totally fine. I will go last because I have a new game type, but <laughs> can start and everybody can introduce one. I'd, uh, I will preface this by saying uh, a master game type list typed out in the Facebook page. I am personally, and I was very happy to be joined by TK with this, I am a game type fiend. I love uh, coming up with new things and trying new things. I every like, every like At least once a week, I'll hash it out with Steven uh, for new game types and ideas and and things like that. If I really had to choose, uh, well, I'll say right now we have uh, the game types we have are divided into two categories. Elimination game types are where you can you have a limited amount of lives, and you can be eliminated. Objective game types usually you have unlimited lives, and to win the round you have to accomplish some sort of objective, take a flag or or something like that. <laughs> like Jack's, uh, like Jack said in a in a video I just watched. Uh, as an old school nerfer, I will say I love 315. It's simple, it's competitive. Or I love the free for all rounds. But if I really had to choose in S, E, and C t games we play, um, uh, I love Rush. As a, I usually ref it, but Rush is where there's two teams and there are like seven uh, points in a line, a straight line down the field, and five of the points are flags and the spawn point moves back depending on uh, on which flags are being taken. And basically, the attacking team has five minutes to claim as many flags as possible, and the defending team has to defend them, then they switch sides. And uh, from I've only played it maybe once ever, because I, like I said, I ref it and I take pictures for that. And uh, it seems to love it. It's a uh, staple now, especially when we can use uh, two fields, because the park we play at has two fields divided by a, a driveway, and we use uh, the full extent of the park for uh, for that game type. So if I had to choose one, it'd be Rush, but there's so many other different game types that... Uh, what the other people have to say? I know what Drak's going to say, but... Here we go. Um, As far as... Wow, my mic got turned on. My ears really loud. Um, as far as my answer goes, it's kind of difficult to choose for me. I like a lot of stuff that we do. That's kind of why I keep coming back. But my favorite is honestly Trouble in Terrace Town, and it doesn't work out well very often, and when it does, it only works out well at Small Wars, and it's it's always interesting, and it's always fun and funny to play. It always makes a lot of laughs, and I felt like I've smiled the most while playing that. 
regardless of the outcome, win or lose, it's always fun. I just wish it wasn't so difficult to play with large amounts of players. And I think that's Stephen, if you want to go. What round did you say, Austin? Trouble. I said Trouble in Terrace Town. 18 mm. I know, I know you don't like it, but I like it. And that was the question: was what was your favorite? And that's my favorite when it works. Time it ever worked is when we pranked Daniel. That, that was the best. The best. That, that was when it worked the best. <laughs> until Carius gave it up, but still was terrific. <laughs> There's a dude in our wars named Daniel. He goes by Dark Dragon on YouTube. I'm gonna cinch this one up really fast as quickly as I can. Anyway, the running gag for the longest time in TTT was that Daniel was always the terrorist. And so, like, he eventually came to hate that, that no matter what he actually drew from the deck, we would treat him like a terrorist. Now, one day, we all got together, and we passed it around at lunch, and everyone was a terrorist except for Daniel. And so Daniel's running around trying to figure out who the terrorist is, and LOL, it's everybody. And that was the best TTT ever. I wish Daniel was here. He's also an admin. Yeah, I was really going to clarify that. Also yeah, shout out to Dark Dragon. He was supposed to be on this podcast, but he's probably really busy going on dates with beautiful women and play bars. Probably. All right. All right, Stephen, go, go for it. So just briefly to touch on, because yes, uh, as you see, TK1138, Stephen, Drac, Flying Chicken, Austin, those are the four admins you have here today. But we are actually eight admins deep, which... Some days feels like, oh my god, why do we have so many? And other days feels like, oh my god, help, we don't have enough. Um, we also have Dark Dragon, and we have EOC, we have Nom, and we have I Am Blob. I Am Bob Blob? Blob, Bob Blob, Blob? Whatever, Bob, that guy. Blob Blob Blob. blob. Uh, and that kind of rounds out our eight man um, admin team. Anyway, Wait, my favorite Bob game Lee? type was actually a last-minute addition prepping for End War. We were those tryhards that prepped for End War. And the SCNC is a bunch of nerf players and a nerf modders who just want to show off their stuff and play and have fun. And we decided we we're going to throw in zombie rounds. So we started throwing in, like, Team Deathmatch zombie squads, which was one of our competitive game types where teams of five formed together, and then wingman zombies. So I'm actually going to specify squad zombies because that got nuts. Um, the two months leading to End War, we realized that um, a lot of the people who are going to be showing up to End War were experienced HVZers. Excuse me. And a bunch of us were nerfers, but not HVZers. And wrapping your brain around HVZ is not as easy as, as it is in a video game. Like, your heart will legit start pumping. And we kind of wanted... We had like 20 people from the SCNC roll in deep for our buddy Drax event, and we wanted to show out well, which that's another subject I'll get to later, I'm sure. Um, so we did HVZ practice with squad zombies, where what, it's a 315 round. Once you're shot, you have three lives, of course, but once you're eliminated, you join the Horde of the Undead. And that got so freaking badass, where like I'm standing there like this was like a, a dream, like I had... Project FDL, and I had Drek, and I had Zach, and Karius, and all my best friends standing in a corner, and 60% of our club in, in the summer, so it was like a hundred-something person event, just screaming and charging at you, and it was a great reminder of college, and I think it was a really great first introduction to the concept of HVZ for our players, and um, since then, the zombie rounds have been a staple of every war. I'm really excited for the admins who weren't at our last war to see the new changes one of our veterans, Carius, came up with for the zombie rounds, which completely revamps the whole thing and really refreshes the whole concept of zombies in SCNC gameplay. Ooh. Well, I am very excited for that. I want to point out that um, for this new idea that I've had recently... I would have just been echoing Steven because I truly like am old school HVZ and I absolutely love our zombie rounds because like he said, like getting to watch new players play against zombies for the first time is hilarious. It's so great. Especially since we have a lot of small players and small zombies 
for those of you that might not be aware, most of you who have played HBZ have only played on college campuses. But playing against child zombies is a whole different ballgame. They have very small hitboxes, and they're pretty fast. Um, Eight-year-old sadistic zombies. That is all. That's true. With noodle arms, no less. So they have the reach of an adult, but the body of a child and the mind of a tiger. Anyway, yeah, I'm really glad I muted that stupid laugh I just had. <laughs> um, I'll be introducing a new game type at the War Austin is hosting in December. It's coming up in just a few days. Uh, I affectionately call uh, our September, November, December wars, September war, November war, December war, because I'm a goof. But uh, I'm introducing a game type called You Keep What You Kill. The inspiration for this is, of course, Chronicles of Riddick. Why does the dude with broken eyes love the Riddick movies so much? I will leave your audience to determine. However, um, it, the, the line, you keep what you kill, is used to say that like, if you kill somebody, you get their weapon in one scene or their throne in another. Now, the game type is going to work in such a way that, and I won't give away the full like diatribe because I'm planning on making an explanation video actually later tonight for it, but the premise is that you bring a blaster that you're comfortable sharing onto the field, and when you kill someone, you must set your blaster onto the ground. That blaster is no longer in play. You retrieve their blaster from them, and you continue play with it. So by the end of the game, you will have switched blasters as many times as you have gotten kills, and the last person standing will have had an absolute blast because it's one life, single elimination. It's designed to be kind of fast, but also just insanely goofy fun. And like, there's definitely like, I don't know, another big thing is that like I make YouTube videos and I think that the footage from such a will be awesome. And Chicken's already pointed out that there's like lots of niche little facets that you can play it however you want to. We're like, obviously, like, some people will just use their FDL because they're comfortable sharing their FDL with whoever kills them. And that's fine. Now, some people will not be comfortable with that. And some people might even be crazy enough to, like, bring out a double breach or a triple shot. So Illuminator. Tech three. On the ground that, like, I don't want to kill him. Like, I don't want to try and kill somebody with a double breach. I don't even have mega darts on. <laughs> what am I going to do? And, like, that is its own, like, I don't know. I think that it's going to be really fun. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But a really great thing about the SENC is because, record, but because our culture is so strong, we can try anything once and have fun with it. If it works, <laughs> it becomes a staple. If it doesn't work, we forget I ever had a crazy Riddick idea. Um, those are some of our favorite game types, Dennis. I think that that gives you a pretty healthy idea of not only what we like, but what we play. We're always trying new things as well. All right. So I really like those answers. I really like all the game types that you talked about, uh, especially as an HVZ player. I'm glad that uh, uh, you guys are finding very interesting ways to work HVZ into Nerf games. Whereas like on my college campus, we would play nerf games every once in a while as an hvz club so we would be trying to bring nerf into hvz style games whereas you guys are doing the opposite which is really interesting to me but that's a whole nother conversation um so one of the things that i find really interesting about the scnc and i think a lot of other people on the internet do too as i'm sure the people in this um podcast have had many conversations with on like nerf modders welcome and similar places is that uh, the scnc doesn't have an FPS limit, which I think is pretty unique for a Nerf club. Most Nerf clubs have like um, either different categories of war per like month, where like one word they'll have like a NIC, where like 300 FPS is the like hard cap. Other times they'll have like a 150 hard cap. Um, and HVZ is kind of another thing, but they all have like 100 to 130 caps that are pretty hard set. Um, but you guys don't really have an FPS cap. You guys just sort of rely on players being good about it, which kind of comes back to your whole thing. But do you guys want to like elaborate on that and how you managed to keep a, a club that's over three years old without an FPS cap, which is something that most people would, um, it, which is a rule that most people would have for the very first game right away. Yeah. So I can. This is this can also be explained. Uh, 
pre SCNC regional stuff. So back in the day, uh, <laughs> things back like my Titans, day. <laughs> day. Uh, things like you know Titans were banned in some regions. Had Supermax five thousand banned. They're singled. Uh, the two regions to not really give a darn were Canada and the Southeast. And uh, we we made it known throughout all the forums. This is before Facebook was a big thing. We made it known through all the forums that we don't mind if you bring your singled plugged big blast or Supermax five thousands. In fact, uh, a, f we have a few short series of wars called uh, wrecked uh, one wars wrecked, and then we started to refer to them as wrecked rounds, where nothing was off limits. So you'd see people with singled titans and singled hydro cannons. And stuff like that. So we kind of made it a point to be silly in that regard. And so that was kind of the, one of the regional characteristics of us that carried over to the SCNC. Like, you know, just don't be a don't don't be like. Uh, what's the language? Uh, how how harsh language can we use here, Devin? Don't yes. be a jerk. We've had people curse on here before, so like, go for it. Don't be a wiener. Yeah, don't be don't, don't be a knob. Don't be any of those things because. It's a cultural thing, like uh, others have touched on. Uh, we we tend if someone comes up to, at a war and uh, asks us, "Hey, is this legal?" We either like we'll shoot them with it, or we'll see how far it shoots, <laughs> and and go go based just on for that. the longest time. The test was straight up, like because Chicken or I would be at every war, and frequently we'd both be at the war. The test was just like if it seemed like if you couldn't bring it to Chicken or I and be like, "Can I use this?" then it, it didn't fly. And like that applied to both paint jobs and performance. And it was like, it's such an arbitrary thing because you're like, how did you make it this far without having an FPS cap? And the answer seems so simple. Like our players are really honest and good. I don't know. I mean, that's really it. Like if you just expect the best from people, most people will give you their best. Like... And, like, we get that we look like a bunch of optimistic do-gooders, and this, this turned out to be a big thing a couple of months ago on Nerf Modders Welcome, when some of our friends from Down Under were just, like, completely baffled by our, our logic or our, our choices. And the thing is, guys, it's not all logic. And that's coming from a German who's also an engineer and just, like, builds his house upon logic, like, Vulcan-esque that it's really about our club members and is the only way that we've been able to truly just kind of stick a middle finger to the culture that has just been a con constant arms race and go, well, that's really cool that we're hitting that. Don't be an ass. Pardon my language. And anybody who's never actually been to the SCNC and played with SCNC players finds that to be the most baffling and BS answer ever. Like, I can't believe how much Chicken and I had to defend. We just, we're not jerks. Well, no, I get that, but what about, no, we're just, we're not jerks. But how do you rate it? Not jerks. But that's literally what it boils down to, and it's kind of hard to understand that sometimes, but that really is just how simple our, our planning is on it. Don't be a jerk. Uh, it and up until the um, and up until the Aussies actually said something about it, I never really realized that it was such a big deal. We didn't have an FPS cap. Like I showed up, and they were like, you know, the rule was always just like, all right, well, if it hits like a single Titan, maybe don't probably use it or bring it. But we don't use HPA up here in America, but so you know, it's not really being that big of a deal. It's it's not been a problem. The only thing I will say about it is um. <sighs> If I could remember what I was going to say, it, just ignore my comment. You alright, everybody? Yeah, I, I just completely, my mind just blanked. So, m we can move along. <laughs> well, that's the bottom line, Dennis, I think. Like, again, broken record. We have insanely good culture, and we don't need an FPS cap to have both competitive and fun wars, so we haven't instituted one now. That in the I remembered. Future. You remembered. Okay, get it. No, I was just going to say, obviously, people from the South are just tough as nails. That's that's what I was going to say. But, you know. I, mean, I, already, I already told the world that we are the best Nerf club. <laughs> like, 
Austin, I'm a delicate flower. Come on. Chicken can be considered They're a delicate flower. All, listen, Jesse emptied his FDL up at me on, turned all the way up, just emptied a mag from three feet away because he felt like it, and I didn't say a word. Well, we so have to stop you know. pretending that the FDL is this end all be all FPS. It's, it's not an end all be all, but it, 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 it's, you know, it's up there. It's definitely like a high powered flywheel blaster, but people are always like, oh my god, there are so many FDLs in the SCNC. It's like, dude, we also have long shots and like people who know how to make long shots. Like, this is not scary to us. And also, EOC's stupid homemade that he plugs you with from across the field right in the neck every single time. I will maintain for his sake that that is barely breaking like 170, like on a good day. That is. That is a very safe blaster. In a I refuse to believe protection. it. Agreed. And as Drag said, we've got a lot of FDLs. Guys, we, at last count, we have, I believe, nine FDLs in the SCNC, which Are you counting right mine? then and there, yes, actually, you would be number nine or ten. I can't remember. But all I'm saying is so many people go, oh, the FDL, how do you balance it? We have nine or ten, and we have not broken as a club and this is a club that doesn't have an FDL limit. I mean, FDL limit. Well, that's true, too. An FPS limit. And we have nine FDLs. It's because that culture comes back again. And that I can count on me looking at every person on the field who has an FDL and saying, Hey, guys, let's turn this down in that another 20%. I personally play with my blaster like 65%. Sometimes 80% if I'm doing long-range shots. And that's because I can look at all the other people and going, Okay, hey, I get that you want to turn it up. But maybe try not to, and they actually listen. It's they're ridiculous. also better when they're balanced out. Like I've been, I've been plinking with mine, and like at full tilt, full torque, it's actually harder for me to hit things than that sweet spot that you're describing. But uh, obviously, this is a discussion that we've had, and we take safety very, very seriously, despite what some people might think. And as it stands right now, we don't need an FPS cap. Our culture is just that good. Agreed. Um, so next I kind of want to know, um, so you guys are all admins and, uh, I, I know what I like about being an admin of, uh, like an HVZ club and that sort of thing. But why don't you guys talk about like what you guys like about being an admin versus being a player? Cause that's not something that everyone gets to experience. I mean, our admins play. So really all the, not all the, but being an admin in the SCNC at least, really detract from your, your playing. It probably takes you out of it for one or two rounds for certain organizational things. Um, it requires that you store a bunch of gear and provide that gear. But really, like all that being an admin changes is it gives you a sense of ownership and pride already a part of. So like... For me, being a part of the SENC is the best, and then being able to say that like I have a hand in its direction is just the cherry on top. So I'm sure that there are definitely differences, but they're so subtle for our club that great answer for this one. I'll let the other guys try. So I'm specifically going to jump in front of Chicken here. Chicken, wait your turn. It's important. I want to give a stupid, serious shout-out to Chicken here. Because Chicken's put up with more BS as an admin than I would have. He's a better person than me. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I mean, like, Chicken's a better like, person like, up until, Agreed. Up until last war, I had like 90% of the club assets in my garage. I drive a 2014 Honda Civic. It was fun getting that all in there. I'm talking about noodles, flags, community darts, iPro, lost and found, territories, cores. I mean, it was nuts. And all of and your Chicken, stuff. Like, and all of my stuff, and I'm a glamper when it comes to Nerf. Like, I buy, I bring a tent and two tables just so I can have all my stuff. I'm that guy. And the flags, and whatever. Chicken carried all of this stuff, and it's, it's a lot. You know, people see the admins yelling but, and, and running events, but truthfully, admins are players, and that is key to us because that way we don't lose sight of who our customer basically is, uh, and that's the players. We are players. We are. That means we have to reload a little faster, or yell a little louder, run a little harder. But that's that's it. 
it's really not that big of a deal until, you know, Austin, Daniel, and Chicken and I get into like a late night, hey guys, what if conversation, at which point you just have to mute Facebook and go to sleep. Um, but really, Chicken ran that. it for so long, carrying so much stuff, and it makes me so happy to see the flying chicken, the freaking nerfer back on the field again, and like able to just be a player and run around and have people to help carry that load with him. But we aren't just keeping it as admins. We are passing that off to a lot of our veteran players. We experimented last war with having some of our veteran players who've been there for a year, two years or more run specific rounds, which actually was remarkable. We are literally owning and running the largest, one of the most large, one of the largest, most active nerf clubs in the war world. And we are giving away that power to the players. Wow, is that GameStop? Power to the player? I apologize if it is. I uh, think it is. I mean, there you go. We even have two members who work at GameStop. One of which we call GameStop. I guess it's my turn to jump in there. Well, thank you, Stephen. Uh, to answer your question, Dennis, I honestly can't give you the perspective on what it's like to be an admin because I've always just been an admin. Uh, and as the, the the sad truth of it for me is that uh, the more the the more the club carry on, the bigger we got, the more I progressed into being an admin and not less of a player. The, especially like the past year when we really took off and had those hundred person wars, uh, I didn't play, and like uh, I, I won't lie, like I've like I mentioned before, I've been act consistently active, no 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 hiatuses at all for nine years. I've been suffering from burnout, and uh, and this was, it was like intense burnout, and it was one of the reasons why uh, I've been like Daniel Austin and TK to uh to host more because i couldn't i just couldn't do it long i've been planning and organizing crunching everything for so long i couldn't do it it's, i mean it's not it's, this isn't about me but again sharing my perspective and uh so it, it's i don't have a a type personality but i take over when i think things aren't being done right and i feel like now i've it's other time for other people to do their part and i get to be a player again which makes me so happy because I love playing. I love playing. I love using my stupid old vintage blasters against the dumb cursed flywheels and uh, having a good time. I got. I just got a new jersey that is amazing. And uh, and even though I know I can't play every round, I have duties. Even if I don't host a war, I I'm still the photographer, which we haven't touched on yet. But I imagine that. A lot of people are are uh, happier, maybe not knowing what goes into it. Will need to. I don't know. What I'm saying is that there are some people in the club that are, we can hand responsibility off to, and for others not to worry about it. Trying to say. Uh, real quick, chicken. Uh, just because I don't think there's another question that it sort of fits into. Do you want to talk about your experience as like the club photographer, real quick? He definitely should. Like, we have such wonderful photographs at the end of every war. Make would, sure you uh, mention your I'd dad, like... too. Yeah, definitely. So, okay, so a little more context. My father, his nick, his name is the the old guy. He uh, he was a big part of the Southeast NIC. He played with us and drove me to wars when I couldn't drive. And even when I could drive, still came to wars. And he only retired from Nerf like two years ago. But a lot of the old people, older but he uh, back in the day on, on forums it was pretty hard to get good nerf pictures and you'd only see them sometimes when someone happened to bring a camera but it would be my dad you know my dad would bring his his old Nikon and uh, he'd take pictures and it was cool and uh, eventually uh, I started using it occasionally but especially with the SCNC came around I started using it more and more A little bit. I'll tell you right now. One of my worst fears is losing memories. And there's a website we used to use heavily called Nerf Revolution. It was basically the hub of uh, the Southeast activity. It was a forum, NerfRevolution.com. And uh, we had we posted our wars there. We host post our re war recaps there when we did them, where we 
talk about our highlights on the board and post pictures. And then suddenly uh, the website was gone. All those memories gone, just like that. Uh, and so what I did then, I now, uh, so what everyone in this chat besides Dennis knows about is my two terabyte external hard drive. Its nickname is Blackberry. And on it is a folder for every single Nerf War I've gone to in the Southeast, and even ones I haven't. And in every folder are pictures and video of memories that I don't want to... Like, if I ever get hit by a truck, Chicken has a responsibility to bring me the world's longest slideshow to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's that. And then talking about me as a photographer, and so that, that was one of the things where I would everyone would just love looking at recaps and pictures of wars because it brings back the memories and so that's not and so that's what i've been doing with pictures over the past two three years even we'll get to see themselves in pictures which everyone loves it's so thrilling you see yourself in pictures that's so cool and over time uh i actually started to really enjoy it i was never one of those photography people but i really do enjoy it it's starting to become a, as an artist as a musician i'm beginning to see the artfulness of photography better at it if you look at the pictures for the war album photos from uh from this past year as compared to the previous two years they're much better my personal development as a photographer i absolutely love like gives me a huge ego boost whenever people compliment me on my photos uh i love doing it i mean i again i regret that i don't get to play when i do it but again people it's it's worth it to uh to see how much people love it and it's also and it's really uh, it's worth it because I know that these podcasts have a uh, a YouTube component. Like, you should poke around in our group for maybe fifteen minutes and attach a few of them to this segment because he has got some awesome photos. Like, not just of the people who have been talking in this podcast, but just in general. Like, at one point we were featured in the uh, the Atlanta magazine, and they sent out their own photographer, like a professional. I take photographs for this magazine photographer. And it was hilarious to me because the photographs that this guy took weren't half as good as the ones that Chicken took at the same war. Like, he could have just asked us for a couple of snapshots instead. As far as my experience being an admin over um, being just a regular player, give me one second. Actually. Can we skip Austin? No, uh, do, you, do you, if, if I must be skipped, I can be skipped. No, I just, I... Hey, don't worry. No, by all means, get get in there. But I thought uh, it, it. Okay. Um. Now, granted, I haven't hosted many wars. I attempted to host a birthday war for myself back in April, and that went okay. Chicken saw that I was struggling and helped me out, which was awesome, and I appreciate that so much. Um. Other than that, it's it's been kind of nice to be able to take breaks from the rounds because I don't work out or do anything athletic other than nerf. So it's it's always nice to be able to take a break, and I talk too much as you might have noticed earlier i don't know but i do like to talk a lot so i use it as a social outlook because i just love talking to all the people there so much and there's plenty of them that don't play anymore or don't play every round so it's always nice to be able to sit around and chat and kind of have an excuse to do it other than that i just enjoy mostly policing the page that's kind of how i got into this job was direct notice to me mentioning people who are like trying to sell stuff me mentioning be like hey there's like a you know there's a nerf buy sell trade group on facebook why don't you join that and sell it there and say because we don't really allow sales posts in the group and uh that led to drac being like making an announcement of the game of war and said where's austin hey everybody if you're gonna post something at cnc think would austin post this and if he wouldn't don't post it and then he I approached me asking about being an admin and almost out of sheer desperation because chicken and i were at the end of our rope however that said Austin has grown, not only, like, as an admin, but also as, like, a human man-type person over the last two years in a way such that, like, I'm actually very proud of Austin. Austin and was a mediocre admin who nobody really respected because he was 15. But now Austin does a pretty good job, and we're very proud of him. Yay. But anyways, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's been interesting, and I've always felt, you know, uh, I got to a lot of the, um, as far as, like, letting people into the club or not, back in the day, I got to it really quick and stuff, because I've been homeschooled my whole life, so I've always had my phone, so whenever I got the request, I could go ahead and approve it or deny it, because Chicken was a student at the time, and Drek was just busy with all kinds of other stuff, so it was, it was pretty helpful for me to 
be able to be online pretty much whenever they needed me. And yeah, like Jack said, I mean, I, there's a lot of people with a lot of respect for me. It's kind of a big weight on my shoulders, but it's also nice to have the responsibility in comparison to, you know, the other places I am in life. I really don't think I should get into this. I don't think I should get into the story of how I became an admin. That's silly. I mean, you can still talk about being an admin, especially because you just recently became one and you've been like a player for a good amount of time. And so I'd like to well, know. See, that's okay. Fair enough. So um, I've actually not been a player for too terribly long. I joined in the June war just before NVZ. Um, First, last, wonderful Montana, more cattle than humans, NVZ. And um, that's when I joined. And so the fact that I made admin so quickly is I've had people go, wow, that was really fast. But I've also been like hardcore, always on the trying to, trying to do stuff. So it's been great because as a player, I got to see all these rounds and learn about the SCNC and about the history, about the game types. And then out of the blue, becoming an admin after NWAR was a lot of responsibility, like a lot. Um, it took time to kind of like tone down because like I'm a competitive person and I am part of a, what started out as a joke and that some of us still consider a joke, but some of us might take a little too seriously team in the SCNC called tax squad elite, which it actually legally has to be said like that. I'm not even kidding. Tax squad elite. Well, it sounds well, like you can... I will also accept hushed breaths of beautiful women. That was breaths. Um, saying tax squad elite. But so it's a bunch of tryhards and includes myself, Dart Dragon, Ray, who was one of the admins of End War, Project FDL, and his and the newest member, his son. So like having to balance like having a competitive team within the SCNC, kind of as a joke, kind of not, but also having admin responsibilities, which sometimes means not being able to tell everybody the cool stuff that I hear. But in to have that active component in changing and influencing what we do in this club that we love, it's totally worth it. Um, I, that being said, my wife does not like me being an admin because she has since been... She used to use me as a taxi to Atlanta. I actually don't live in Atlanta. I'm a time zone behind in Birmingham, Alabama. And my wife used to catch rides with me to Atlanta. But since becoming an admin, I have so much admin, I'm going to say stuff, but I really want to say something else, to bring with me to Atlanta that there is no room for my family in our car anymore. To be fair, your family is also larger now. Uh, let me take a public opportunity to congratulate TK. Uh, whose last name is Cook, for making too many cooks. Uh, since becoming an admin, Stephen has had a wonderful daughter named Heidi. Much harder to bring Yay. your whole family to wars, as there are now three of them. Um, Something else I would like to say about Stephen is Stephen is just a completely invaluable admin now. He is amazing. I feel like he does a lot perfect. of stuff. He can be the... Chose him on a lark? Like no, no, I, I know, and I'm, I just, I'm just making a point and giving details of why he's uh, very important to our team. Of as far as he's grown us, he's made us have a treasury now, and actually he takes care of our funds for us and orders. Oh, us I mean, stuff. leave it to the German to want to tell the Greek guy what to do with the money. Like, <laughs> other than that, though, and he's, he's also. I'm sorry that the euro is not a magical currency that you can just keep spending on retirement at the age of thirty. <laughs> And it expect the rest of it. magical to me. <laughs> yeah, I imagine for you it does. You guys, you know, I'm actually sitting here sorting community darts as we do this podcast. That's that's how I roll. But re I'm regardless, for a Greek, I have edited two videos while we're recording this podcast. Dennis, we got to move on, buddy. I don't even think we're halfway in. <laughs> we're actually a little more than halfway, I think, more or less. We're gonna make it! Alright, so I know that in addition to your monthly wars, you guys also have a couple special wars that you do in addition throughout the year. I know you guys um, already mentioned Costco, uh, but I know there's also Nomne, and I think one or two others, if you guys want to talk about that and why you do uh, special wars in addition to just your monthly wars and what separates them. Well, I think that I can cover this one pretty well. Um... As I mentioned, when I founded the SCNC, these NIC wars almost quarterly, 
And when I started the SCNC as almost like a selling point to my friends who again, like were this core group that I really wanted to be a part of it. I was like, and don't, 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 don't worry about it. Like we will still totally do our regular NIC wars. This won't take anything away. It'll just be more. And, and we held to that. So Costco is a big NIC war that's very close to Chicken's Heart. Nomne is Nom's big NIC war. We usually do one more in the, the early part of the year called Fifty Shades of Red. Red being Nom's now wife. Again, more congratulations uh, to Dennis and Red for finally getting married. Um, but as an NIC war, and then... Uh, Sometimes we do an extra one, and then occasionally we'll add other SCNC wars if we really need like a special like SCNC war for a certain event or for like a birthday. Sometimes, like Austin mentioned, he did a birthday war. Like, so realistically, the SCNC probably runs somewhere around like 16, 17 wars a year. And that's probably about as many as people can handle, even with as like robust as our numbers are to organize but the reason that we have these special event wars is for nic style gameplay which uh if some viewers are not necessarily familiar with that that is the half link predominantly homemade high fps uh variant of the hobby and we divide our wars based on dart type that you can use and no matter what people want to say like the half link darts hit harder and fly further and straighter so uh that has kind of been the last bastion of our NIC wars. And honestly, if you look at the state of the NIC wars like uh, APOC and Armageddon, like Namne in particular being our big summer war, is the largest NIC war, I think, in North America at this point. And it's probably because it's currently augmented and bolstered by the SCNC in general. But uh have more wars, some of which have specific names and are very special because not only are they a different kind of war most of the time, but they almost always are like the the brainchild of somebody who or since even before the SCNC. Like I think we're on Nomine six or seven, and I think we're on Costco four. Like it's definitely been happening for a while. And I actually also like to touch on a war that Drac hasn't mentioned is that as a club, the SCNC, since we are Southeast, not Atlanta Nerf Club, we've also done some fun outreach wars with other neighbor clubs that we tried to give fun names to. Um, in November, not this past November, but the one before that, we did SCNC DTF. You know what that means? <laughs> and it's down to Florida. And that is where six of our SCNC members, Drac, Chicken, Dart Dragon, myself, A.A. Ron, and Pat oh, that was another one. And Pat drove Everybody down to Gainesville, Pat. Florida, which is about six to eight hours south of Atlanta, in leaving at like three o'clock in the morning to have a Nerf war in the middle of a cow field full of poop and inflatable barricades. And I actually had a terrific war. Um, it was my first foray into YouTube war games. That was a lot of fun. But we've done that. And actually, because of that, you know, we've. We've done outreach to other events, um, even though it was not considered an official SCNC war. A secondary club in Alabama that Jack mentioned earlier started because of SCNC members, and it's really great to see that you know we, as as a club with something as big as the name of Southeast, are supporting and growing other clubs for people who may not find that driving two hours from five o'clock in the morning every second Saturday of the month to Atlanta as a viable option. And Love that you, is Steven. one of the greatest take quiz. Yeah, yeah. As an admin, I have to leave at five o'clock in the morning to Sorry, drive and get to SCNC. Yeah, it's I'm okay. On the way back, I get home a little early. It's fun. But uh, yeah, you know, we Nomne and Costco and Fifty Shades are huge. But, you know, we're, we're, as a club, looking to expand. We, we've considered doing wars where we have lots of members. You know, Alabama is kind of taking care of itself. We've done Florida. Who knows? North Carolina, South Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee. If we see members start to pop up, there's no reason we won't, as a club, say, you know what? Let's do a war. Kind of like a, a kickoff, like, hey, here's a first go. Make a club out of it. Keep coming back. Let's do it. We'll leave you the darts. 
and the cow shit. Yeah, you can keep that too. All right, so um, I have two questions about future events, uh, but those feel more suited to close off the podcast. Um, so I was saving this question for a little bit later uh, so we could see, you know, because this is probably going to take, this is going to be one of the longer questions being, do you guys have any specific memories that you'd like to share uh, from the SENC or any stories you want to tell with the audience? Um, anything that you want to share? Anything particularly memorable or special to you? Um, I can go first because I'm at the top of the Discord thing. So, obviously I've been to most of the wars. Deep perspective on a lot of the things. Um, and I actually shared with you that my favorite memory from End War was like the little welcome speech and the like wow moment when I looked out over a crowd of like 400 people who were all there to support this like dream that I had. And uh, I guess what I want to touch base on is that like my favorite memory from the SCNC that I can like this early and remember right now is like three months before End War when the disaster that was that led to its genesis was coming together, there was an SCNC war. Of my crazier ideas, I will sit at lunch in the SCNC uh, under somebody else's shade because I almost never bring my own. And uh, I'll sit there and I'll just pitch ideas at people. And it doesn't matter who they are, but if they're around, I will, I will throw ideas at them. And so at the time, all I could think about was like how to save, not end war necessarily, but the concept. And I was like, man, how is this going to work? And so like, I probably pitched it for that war. I was like, I think I'm going to do this thing. It's going to be really expensive. I don't know how I'm going to do X. I don't know how I'm going to do Y. I don't know how I'm going to do Z. And everybody that I talked to about it in the SCNC was particularly like very supportive and many people were like, if you do that, we'll go. And it was just like, there's a huge difference between the, like a thin branch and being like, gosh, I hope this supports me. And like having like five lifelines and jumping out on that thin branch. And that's kind of like what the SCNC did. In the war. So like, that's actually my favorite moment because it led to like all of these things, like an SCNC member printed all of the mod things at cost. Steven sourced basically all of the deliverables at incredible prices, and I didn't have to do realistically any work beyond just writing Steven a check. Um, uh, people from the SCNC helped me put on the event. They were in the mod team. They were in the briefing rooms. Like They helped kind of bring... There were so many people that came to End War from the SCNC that we brought a good enough chunk of our culture with us to really like help set the tone and fix the culture for an event like that. And I don't take that for granted at all. But like relieving to be like, guys, I think I'm going to do this thing because it's the right thing to do. What do you think about it? And everybody was just like, you should do that. We'll support you. No questions asked. No like, but what ifs? Like just... Whatever happens, we will we will sink or swim on your ship. Like, go for it, man. And so, like, that's my favorite SCNC memory recently would be, I guess, or that would be, it would be, it was probably the March War, I guess, of this year. But uh, that's my favorite memory. Moving down the list, uh, Chicken, do you have a particular memory you want to share? So many. I know, right? <laughs> I wish I could. I man, I wish I could choose just one. I'm sorry to to let you down here. I don't have just one. I'm gonna I'm gonna cop out and say it's every single time we we as a group exit a restaurant bathroom. That. Oh my goodness. So we take bathroom selfies. And when it was just 12 of us, it wasn't that bad. But now we put like 40 to 50 men in a single Chick-fil-A bathroom. 
And going in is pretty bad, but nothing, nothing compares to everybody walking out all at once because everyone in the restaurant looks at you like, what just happened in that bathroom? So I'm usually the one, I, uh, I have the designated bathroom selfie uh, picture taker. And it's, it's one <laughs> the, most, the, the f- most fun thing to get everyone in there, to get the ladies in there as well. And uh, people standing on toilets or under the stall. And then I'm usually one of the first ones out. So I get to look back and see everyone walk out. Then look around the room and see all the other restaurant goers eating their food with their mouths agape looking at us. Like, why the hell are these people here? Sometimes we'll wear dumb outfits. We'll, we'll go in our dirty war clothes and get ups or wear T-Rex hats. The you worst know. by far is I once wore the Drac helmet with the mask attached to it into an Olive Garden bathroom. And like Olive Garden is not like super upscale, but it's nice enough for the South that like people were blown away when a dude in a full leather helm walked out of the bathroom. Like it was super great so if i have to choose one thing it's gonna be it's gonna be ex- the bathroom selfies sure why not the bathroom selfies all right austin don't let me down all right it actually involves drac believe it or not i mean first of all any of the stories drac tells are fantastic to listen to always funny most of the time not very appropriate um anyways probably my favorite memory at least the one that comes to mind the biggest is um in a game of fellowship, which we don't play anymore, sadly, but we used to have tons of zingbos and arrows. So basically, be you get zingbos and arrows, or you get a melee weapon. And I remember sprinting down the field at a at Fayetteville at McCurry Disc Golf Park, and there's a tree that grows and splits into two trees. So there's still some stump at the bottom, but there's a gap in the middle of it. I remember running and running past that just as Drac jumped behind it. And I snapped him and hit him right in the stomach with the Zingbo, which I know was like the biggest part of the body, but it felt so satisfying to hit him. And his look back up at me was just, oh, I, I think of that memory whenever I need to feel happy. That's just probably oh, the most satisfying hit I've ever dealt. That or when you mocked me for running my sledge fire and you pushed up the hill at East Cobb Park and I popped you, just barely hit you with one of the darts. Wait, is this also me? That was you too, yeah. All right, the sludge fire thing never happened. I will admit that the Zingbo thing happened, and I am frankly shocked that your best S E and C memory is me like on my knees in pain. Did you did you fall to your knees? I am glad that uh, that, that makes you happy. I'm glad that that's your happy place memory. <laughs> I'm thrilled that I could provide that for you. I mean, other than that, just. I love everybody so much. I can't really pick a favorite memory. That's just my favorite battle memory. The sledge fire thing is at least me. Okay. So, the SC, this I guess is also associated with End War, but not not one I think I've shared before. Um, the SCNC rolled deep to End War. We're talking like eight hours, and we probably had about 20. 20 players show up. And if you consider the fact that our average core player group is 80 people, you know, we have new people and kids and whatever that push, push, pushes us over 100. We're looking at 25% of our club, and a lot of our veterans came out to support Drakkar N1. Um, and so, you know, we, we brought our flag. We had a guy at the final stand with a nemesis in one hand and our SCNC flag in the other. It was glorious. But truthfully, guys, my favorite SCNC memory was actually a loss for us. And that was at NWAR, there was a competition for best group. And it was SCNC versus Go Slow Taco, which for those of you who don't know what that is, it's a bunch of the YouTubers, a bunch of the content creators and part creators and material creators who have their team, Go Slow Taco. I'm not entirely sure the details about it because I'm not a part of it. The details but are... It, bunch of people who should play hard who choose not to play hard because they're losers. Sardonically. I'm doing sardonic with bunny ears. Uh, Sardonic means sarcastically. But anyway, so it was a a matter of who chanted the loudest. And we thought SCNC, we're rolling in deep. We took vans and buses and repurposed police crown vics all the way up from the dirty south all the way up to Ohio passing by a weird nuclear power plant. Who Who does that? 
Anyway, well, and and we, we, we went there. Won't run, they'll shout all day long. Yeah. And we lost, guys. Uh, Go Slow Taco out yelled us. And I think the biggest memory for me was looking at ev- each and every person in our, our club, in the SCNC, and realizing that I didn't see defeat in their eyes. I saw them going, pardon my language here, fucking next year. You bring it next year. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, judging by the way people talk about NWAR, SCNC is going to be rolling in stupid deep to, S- to NWAR number two. And this is me personally calling out Go Slow Taco. You can have Bobo. You can have the containment crew guys. You can have Luke from Out of Darts. We are going to out yell you at End War 2018. Just watch. I actually would like Bobo back, though. It really bothers me that Bobo plays for another house. Like, Yeah, we're, that, that's a subject that hurts. Guys, you weren't going to say it was winning uh, MVH or MVB. Oh, no, no. I guess I'm going to go ahead and since I mentioned an, an end war loss, I'm going to mention an end war victory. SCNC brought home three of the trophies from end war 2017. That is MVB, most valuable brain as a human player, best blaster, and technically, I'm going to go ahead and say runner up as well. Both of the best blasters were SCNC. The winner was the FDL2. The runner up was the Discord, which was the Nemesis before the Nemesis was a Nemesis. And that was two chaoses upside down. Mutual hopper, one trigger, just ridiculous blaster. And we also came home with the holy grail for last human standing. So if that doesn't put some, some good bling in a trophy case, I don't know what does. So really quick on that last story, I don't think anyone here actually knows this, but uh, I happen to be one of the founding members of Ghost Taco from NVZ. I was part of the original group, and I just think it's really funny. Um, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was not helping them win, though, as a moderator. I stayed completely neutral at Endor. But, uh, yeah, I just thought it was really funny that you just told that whole story with... I don't think you realize that I was here, but that's okay. I, I really enjoyed well, your story. Well, Dennis, I, I appreciate you for having us on your podcast. Thank you for having the SCNC. And I guess as politely as I can, as a German making threatening gestures, I'm putting you on notice. Okay? Okay. <laughs> remember, remember when we talked about the SCNC having a non-competitive culture? Yeah. Well, we're not competitive with each other. We're just the best nerf group in the world that's what i was that's what I was also if if go slow taco winning um like loudest chant or whatever whatever that prize actually turned into gets you guys to get more people to come to end war i'm all for it whatever gets more people to end war i'm okay with it like l- let's go if you guys want to be competitive about this and bring more people out i'm all for that Okay, so we've gone through memories, uh, so let's look a little bit to the future. Um, do you guys have anything coming up in the near future that you guys want to talk about? Uh, any special wars, anything you want to invite the general public to? Because I know um, while you guys, like, local wars are um, just sort of for the southeast, uh, Nomne, I know, gets, like, more people from further around because it's specified... Oh, 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 oh. Whoa, 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 Dennis, who gave you the impression that our local wars were just for the Southeast? Our local wars are hosted in the Southeast, but all are welcome. Like, Of course, yeah. I would never imply that not all are welcome. Just that uh, the like special wars like Namne, I think, from, from what I've heard and from what I've seen, attract more uh, people who are willing to drive further for those sorts of things because they're more specialized. Yeah, more travelers. For NIC. Well, have you heard of SCNC 36? Have you heard of that one? That was a great one. Containment crew showed up. And SCNC 35, we had foam blast. SCNC 33, some of the admins from S, uh, from NWAR showed up. There we, we go. Had a bunch people from Ohio. Fly in from New York. Who flies to Atlanta for New York for a game true. and then flies back out? 
I mean, we have a kid from China who comes to our wars. Like, we've been using Chinanio for a long time to tell people that if they don't think it's worth traveling for, he literally crosses the planet. Not to mention Naptown Nerf and uh, the people from um, Thunderdome that have showed up, too. Oh, yeah, I mean, like, we are not only, like, the largest and the best Nerf community, we are also, without a doubt, the most welcoming. Like, we get a ton of people who travel to our wars, and, like, again, to reiterate it, like, all are welcome. And so if you are looking for a specific public event to come and experience SCNC culture... Just whenever it fits into your schedule most conveniently, come on down or up if you're in Florida or lower Texas. Um, we would be happy to have you. Well, I'm going to go ahead and make a shout out. Or if you are in the Central Mexico Nerf Club and you find yourself north of the border with a, uh, a passport, please come join us. That'd be I mean, awesome. One day we're just going to come to them. They are so cool. Like... I'm down to go to Mexico for Is there a war. story behind You're this, or is this just another club Mexico. that exists? Is there, like, a specific story behind the Mexico Nerf Club, or is this just, like, a thing? Okay, have you ever seen or heard of the, the stereotype of, like, Mexican soccer announcers, like, talking about play-by-play -play of the game? Are you, are you familiar with that, Dennis? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Right. Well, the Central Mexico Nerf Club, um, which a couple of us are kind of a part of, they know us. They, they follow us, they track us, they, they see what we're doing, and it, it's really cool because they are, I'm going to go ahead and say it, and I, this is me as an admin of the SCNC going to go ahead and admit this, they are probably one of the most wholesome Nerf Clubs I have ever witnessed. And that is including Horatio's love for uh, scantily clad uh, group pictures. That, um, is, that is also true. Yeah. Well, I met this guy when yeah. we were doing uh, Epic Nerf Battle 2. He came up and I spoke to him in awful Spanish. And I don't know, his Nerf group just seems absolutely great. I FaceTimed with some of them and it was just awesome. So um, my company that I'm an engineer for has a facility in Puebla where they're based. And I am like actively trying to get down there for one of their Mexican Nerf wars. And I'm going to be so really? stoked if I can go represent the SCNC in Mexico. When that one happens, I will go to that one with you, Stephen. I might not be able to go to Scotland for the back-to-back, -back, but I will totally go to the Mexico one. Word. Let's do it. We're going to get some awful street tacos. I can't wait. All right. And also looking to the future, um, let's talk about SCNC. Where do you guys see the club being in, like, five years? It's like a third of my life almost. I'm only 17, man. You're kind of blowing my mind with these questions. All right, so someone is not on oh, uh, It's all going to be okay, buddy, I promise. Um, in five years, uh, in five years, the SCNC will continue to be exactly what it is right now, which is the pinnacle of not only nerfing culture, what a large nerf group should look like, in terms of uh, organization, as well as like goodwill towards the rest of the the Nerf community at large, I uh, think that some of the larger events that we run will be much larger. At that point, there are already plans to institute a tournament style of play, for which I think the SCNC is going to be a shining example of how that can work uh, at works. Those are still very tentative right now. Uh, I expect at that point we will have even more admins. I'll be bringing even more stuff to wars. Uh, I think that sometime in the next year alone, certainly the next five, we will add a few dedicated indoor facilities to our resume. Um, exciting. I've got a, a laser tag arena and then just a standard rec center lined up. And part of the work that like Steven has been doing with, creating a treasury and stocking our coffers will make stuff like that uh, possible. But I, I don't think that the SCNC is going to change that much in terms of what it is and how it feels. I do think that it will continue to get bigger and brighter and better. Uh, like Jack said, I'll jump in here. Uh, 
Stephen and I have talked a lot about the future of the SCNC, and we agree that our big one of our bigger issues right now is uh, finding a new location. And as much as we love East Cobb Park, it has almost everything we want. It's not indoors, so we're suspect to weather, which has always been good to us. But two, we need the space. When we re when we start exceeding sixty people per war, uh, then it starts to get real cramped. Our game types become more limited. Thing we'd love to have a facility just to to store all the stuff, so we don't have to bring so much crap. Besides, uh, we need we need a location. You know, good parking, restrooms, good field, electrical outlets, food close by, uh, close to highway north of Atlanta because that's where everyone else is. Besides location, I'd say the future of the SCNC is a uh, can be is indicative of the hobby itself, and this is something I've been thinking about, and as how Nerf in general is moving to hobby grade. I believe that I have that term correct, hobby grade, where instead of just doing DIY stuff, you know, doing it modding things yourself, making homemade yourself. <laughs> We have companies now. They make third-party parts and whole blasters even. Darts. We have third-party darts. It's amazing. We don't have to craft our own good darts anymore. Most nerfers will not know the pain of making darts. God, that was that was awful. It was awful, but we don't have to do that anymore. It used to legitimately be the like the only part of the hobby that I hated was dart smithing. So in this like new age of nerf, so to speak. There are so many people, content creators and figureheads in the community leading the way, Drac being one of them. So and as the SNC, we're in a pretty unique position where we're a very active nerf club, but we also have a lot of influence, not only in Drac, but like I said, I am well known throughout the community. I'm in a fortunate position myself. We have other content creators like TK and Dar Dragon make excellent content. And we Personally, as a club, position to move forward, not just for the club, but as a, in the hobby as a whole. And then and I'm just not even mentioning the multitude of talented people we have in the club. Besides, besides FDL, uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to Bob Greer, who is an amazing at crafting aluminum parts. I mean, David, who brings all of this stuff and makes all of these cool things. I mean, we could go on and on. There's literally two dozen kids who have gone from being like complete novices to like actually making pretty cool stuff in terms of their modifications like we are so very so, fortunate in the SCNC and that we have like of old blood that brings good culture and like experience to the table and then we have all of this like new diligence at all age levels and all ends of the spectrum like we would not be where we are if we didn't have a little bit of everything. But the SCNC is very indicative of where Bobby is as a whole. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, I think I agree with you there with the new blood coming in and making things even better. But those are just my my current thoughts on the state of of the SCNC and where we're going is and and how it will tie into the Nerf community at large and i personally am interested in us playing a large role in that all right austin give it a shot buddy uh i mean as far as i can see i don't know about imagining a big old indoor facility that'd be awesome and i hope one day we can find that for austin, right now be able to legally drink at this magical point in time tell me about your plans for like defend the 40 <laughs> what's your team Def <laughs> Listen, I'm. Can I just? What? Well, I don't understand your question, so I'm just going to keep ask, answering the question that Dennis asked me because I feel like that's more important. So, Forty is referencing a forty ounce bottle of malt liquor or beer. I probably had to explain that one for. The I first picked time. up that part. The other than that, it was I was lost because I was still talking, kind of. But other than that, I mean, right now I think looking for a um, looking for a new place to play, and stuff like that next what we're going to be doing though and i look forward the most to this because i don't know merch is just dope as we're trying to find merch and stuff to make and be able to sell stuff which I'm just reminded of and but more so the field and i guess the merch and the field are probably the two biggest things that i'm looking forward to and that i see coming pretty quickly more than the next five years but in five years i look forward to 
gosh, five years. I mean, I'll be hopefully graduated from college unless I really mess up. But I don't know. It's kind of hard for me to say because I don't know where I'll be living. I don't know what I'll be doing by then. But I look forward to it regardless. And if you have anything to add, Stephen, you can pop in, I guess. All right. So back to the analytical accountant German. So as I think it was Drac or Chicken, someone referenced, I am the treasurer for the SCNC. One of my jobs as an engineer is sourcing out stuff for my company. So I've taken those skills and brought them to our club in order to find lots of great stuff, including the SCNC patches. I brought that for Drac finding the end war bandanas for basically a steal, same with the end war patches, featuring the amazing artwork of our very own Daniel, uh, aka Dark Dragon, who created the, S uh, the SCNC and the end war logo. He's a graphic designer and does terrific work. Anyway, um, we are looking at merch like Austin mentioned, but we're not looking for like, hey, buy our swag. We're looking to create sustainable systems that help our players as well as help our club. And that seems weird that I mentioned players and club, but it, it, it's sometimes separate, sometimes the same. We are trying to find vendors. We're trying to find venues and places to play. But that leads to all sorts of big hurdles that other hobbies have had to, to jump through. That as a Nerf club, Nerf being a trademark logo, makes it a little bit more difficult for us. We need to find places to play that are indoors or can be competitive. We're looking at Singapore for their 5v5 tournament and wanting to bring that across the country. And I'm not going to talk about that too terribly much because i got a personal friend who's very invested in that idea. And I'm going to let him get to there eventually. But creating stuff for our players to support the club, but also have the club to support them, like stuff that affects their gameplay, flags to help identify teams and bandanas, patches, all sorts of stuff. It's, it's a lot. We're looking at sponsors, both for, for venues and for darts, for expendables. You know, there's, there's so many options out there that now that we have developed as a club, not just a bunch of friends, but like an entity of sorts that we, we literally get people coming to us trying to help us. I had a guy come to me last word going, hey, I want to help you guys find some other places to play. Get in touch with me. Let's find you some venues. It's, it's terrific. And all of this has spawned from a bunch of guys doing what they want to do. We're not... We're not some altruistic babysitters, and that's important to touch on. We are hobbyists. We do this because we want to, not because we're like, oh, let's get kids running or let's, you know, babysit your children. It's because we love to do what we do. Does your kid want to do it? Awesome. Kid has great taste. I mean, look at us. We're awesome. But it's more to find sustainable systems to do this that aren't predatory, that aren't how do I say, like, hoping on a prayer? We, we want to create stuff that, at the end of the day, can go on without us. Where is the SCNC in five years? I'm hoping having our own venues, having our own big events. But what about 10 years, 15 years? The only way we're going to get there is be, by creating stuff today that will continue on long after we have died. God, that's morbid. But that's kind of the idea. Drac kind of hinted at it earlier where he, he went to China, he went to Scotland, he was all over the place. And you know what? The SCNC ran without him. And I hope that one day I can disappear and do something. And the SCNC runs without me and runs without Chicken, without Austin, without Daniel, without Pat, without Nam, without Bobo. That it continues on as a self-sustaining entity because that's what our players and our hobby deserves is to have that kind of example of what a club as a democracy can do and not just an oligarchy by a couple of guys because eventually that will either die or become toxic. And I feel like the SCNC has maybe one of the best chances out there to becoming a self-sustaining entity. And that's I, what I, see. I hope not, not, to, not to sound like a a uh, guy is so full of himself, but man, I really hope the SCNC runs runs well without me. But I think it's in good hands now. So, 
Well, Dennis, thank you very much for having us. I was just about to say the same thing. Those are all of my questions. Uh, so does, unless anyone has anything else they want to like throw out there or anything, any other info they want to talk about that I didn't uh, ask about, feel free to do that now. How, uh, how long is this one? We are at an hour 45 right now. Which is still is not the, the not quite one? not quite the longest. I think the one where we talked about DIY was probably the longest. How long do we have to go to win? Uh, another like twenty five minutes. Nope. The Steven has two small children. Austin has a bedtime. Chicken has classes to teach, and I still have about four hundred emails to deal with today. So <laughs> we are all very busy people outside of this, but we sincerely appreciate the opportunity to speak about our wonderful club on your podcast. Uh, as our uh, worthy founder, if only in name, I wish to welcome anyone who is listening to attend one of our wars. Uh, you are welcome to challenge any of the things that you have heard today or just embrace them and have a truly wonderful free Saturday. We would love to have you. We are always looking for more, I mean, friends. And uh, that that is pretty much to share with you for now, I think. Next war is December 9th. Um, and you too can be part of the SCNC. It doesn't matter where you live. If you live in Michigan, Mexico, China, Singapore, Australia, whatever. If you have something you think you want to see at the forefront of the Nerf hobby, if you have a game type that you've been mulling around and you want to see how it plays, let us know. Join us on Facebook at the Southeast Nerf Club. It's a welcoming group. You can post your ideas. You can ask questions. Please don't just try to sell stuff. But we want to hear your input. And you can be as part of the SCNC, and it doesn't matter where you are what you're capable of doing, whether you're a new modder or you've been secretly tinkering in your mom's garage for 15 years, I don't care. Come join us, even if it's just online. We're a great bunch of guys, girls, and Austin, and I think you could be a great part of it too. <laughs> and just while you're not trying to sell things, also don't ask us where wars are going on in Melbourne, Australia, because we don't know. Well, I mean, we do, but we're not really a part of that. We can't, we can't get into all the specific joke posts, guys. It's not fair to Dennis's time. Like, That's fair one. enough. I hope that everyone who has listened has a great week and has a great Christmas. Chicken, or could whatever you, you stop celebrate? being the best person on the face of the planet for 10 seconds? Yeah. It's gross, dude. Okay, sorry. I'll Leave space for some of us to catch up. So I think that wraps it up for me then. Um, thank you all for being here. I know some of you have YouTube channels and or Instagram and whatever else, social media type things. If you guys want to quickly plug that stuff now as to where we can find you and follow your content. Um, I know you guys talked about the SCNC has a Facebook page. I'll put that link in the video description for sure. Uh, if you guys have any personal ones you guys want to throw out there, feel free to do that now. Um, I don't think that Austin has one. I would definitely appreciate it if you would plug the SCNC Facebook page. That is the subject of our talk. But TK1138 has a... Uh, a phenomenal YouTube channel that is currently undersubscribed, in my opinion, for the hobby. So you should definitely put that link down there. And the chicken has a YouTube channel that's definitely worth checking out, but only if you have free time and you like really want to laugh, because his videos are hilarious. Um, poking around our war photos on that Facebook page will give you a really great feel for how much fun we have at our events. I'm going to take this opportunity to plug Carius, another one of the under known long-term SCNC members, even though he's just kind of sort of recently come back. He was the final human standing at end war and does really absolutely crazy integrations of just, Hey, can I put three of these together? Yes, you can. If you've watched Drax's channel, you've probably seen some of Carius's work. And most importantly, I want to plug an Instagram for Chris Redfield at one, two Edfield one, two kind of makes like an R shape. He is our resident drone pilot for the SCNC who drove all the way up to Athens, Ohio with us to get that buttery, awesome 
drone footage of the end war gameplay. He does some really excellent stuff that is nerfed and is not nerfed and totally worth checking out. Shout out to the channel Forsaken Angel 24 for inspiring my videos. EVH same. All right. Well, that wraps it up for me. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you to everyone who listened for listening. And uh, yeah, see you on the next one, which I have no idea what's going to be about. Because last time I said that this one was going to be about Singapore, and it was clearly not about Singapore. Oh, well, let me know when you want to do your thing about Singapore nerf so that I can ruin that one too. That was a joke. Haha. <laughs> Thanks, Austin. That's why we brought you. That's why I feel like I'm around a lot of the time. <laughs> Good night, guys.